All right. Uh, I hit record. So we are now recording. Uh, if anybody doesn't want to be recorded, you have the opportunity to leave now. Um, so I put together an agenda here. Uh, I have the hopes that this meeting actually doesn't need to be an hour and effectively we can potentially compress it down to 45 minutes or even half an hour. Um, maybe we'll target 45 minutes today since we're heading into the holidays. Uh, but if we do have uh, kind of longer discussions about any of these topics, we'll have the space here for it. And we'll continue to try to eat less of everyone's time if possible. Um, I've thrown an important document section up here. Uh, the only difference between last week's uh, is the inclusion of the reader privacy specification that Ivan was kind enough to put together for us. I think most of you have read that, but uh, if you haven't read it, take a look at this link. Um, are you all seeing my share of the Notion notes? It doesn't we have are. the green yeah. line around it like it usually does. I think you're sharing your whole screen instead of the window. Oh, that's okay. Um, but you can see this reader privacy link that I just highlighted. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't have, usually it has the green glowing box around it to indicate that it's sharing the screen, but it doesn't right now. Um, all right. So the purpose of this meeting is we're going to focus on kind of some of the aspects of the technical implementation of double hashing that's being proposed right now and any feedback or questions concerns regarding uh, potentially future implementations of ambient content routing i think we just got some notes from uh, Will last night that uh, may guide our conversation. Cool, cool through. And I, I like, to, like we're not fully done, done, done on the delegated content routing from gateways hitting CID.contact using HTTP delegated routing. I'd just like to check in on that thread as well um, so that we fully wrap that up because it's not 100% done yet. Let's throw an item in. That, that's, a, that's at the top of the list. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if we had additional topics. We can jump straight into this then. Um, so I, I can speak to this one if it if it helps. Yeah, yeah, jump in. Oh, yeah, I know, I know there's certainly feel free to fill in. So my, so as people are aware, we had the whole we had the reframe thing, which I call reframe, and then uh, HTTP delegated routing, which is the IPIP three three seven, which is you know the the update. Um, so in terms of where this has rolled out, CAD.contact uh, has this in production. Uh, it, it has uh, HTTP delegated routing in production. I believe uh, if I saw that, so if we you can click into the issue that I linked above, but Hydra's um, I guess hasn't deployed yet because he was noticing a problem with uh, CPU usage. So I think he's identified it and he's going to then deploy today. So we should get the Hydra's deploying today. And as Lytle has listed here, Kubo 0 0.18 by default uses uh, delegated routing, HTTP delegated routing hitting CID got contact. And we're cutting the RC today. Maybe it's already been already been done. Um, so that that's all good. There's also the aspect of rolling this out to the gateways. And it looks like the gateways just recently deployed reframe integration um, from the IPFS.io gateways to CAD.contact, but there's a follow-up deployment that needs to occur that uses HTTP delegated routing from the gateways to uh, CAD.contact. Um, so I, I, in, in the, sorry, if you go back to the notes, uh, issue 2183 in Sorry, oh, sorry, you meant the notes in GitHub. No, no, no. Yeah, no, the Notion notes. Um, yeah, th thank you, Masi. Yeah, 2183. Yeah, so I don't know, like this issue was tracking the reframe rollout, but we need to again come through and do a rollout that actually switches to using HTTP delegated routing. Um, so like I'm assuming 
obviously it kind of took months to do this rollout with Bifrost with Reframe. Um, I want to make sure somebody is owning doing the Bifrost rollout with HTTP delegated routing. Yes, uh, I did follow up on that when you brought it up, Steve, and they have a new engineering manager over there. I don't know if y'all have uh, talked to him yet. His name's Cameron Wood. Okay. Um, but uh, let me grab the name. Sorry, I don't know everybody yet. <laughs> still, still getting the hang of that. But uh, somebody is assigned to it, and they were out this week. Um, but I think their goal was to have it wrapped up by Friday. Let me just confirm that, and then I'll throw that in these notes. Uh, so. Well, and, and, to, and to be to be fair, like this is the HTTP delegated routing code paths in Kubo are are new. Like there's a there was a bunch of new code that got written over the last month. Uh, we just are doing the RC today, so I, I don't think it's probably prudent for us to be pushing this all out by by Friday. It, it's going to need to bake for a day or two. Um, you know, at the minute, I mean, but point is like this is more than a configuration change. There is there is new code here, and so like I would want to make sure the Bifrost team is aware of that and are you appropriate. Uh, sorry, responding with appropriate care. Like obviously, I would love to go into the break with this being fully um, done, but we need to be safe. Um, and yes but i just most important thing is i just want to make sure it gets owned and it doesn't fall through the cracks for two months uh it is owned uh, so mario camus is on it hope i'm saying that last name correctly but uh i can check in with him and just make sure that the scope of work reflects um in entirely what you've uh, described steve if, if you want to okay um, if you have is the entirety of what you just described in the GitHub issue that I can walk through with them? Uh, I think, I mean, the, the the points are there, just that I want to make sure we end up using HTTP delegated routing from the gateways, not reframe. So I think that that point is in my comment. Yeah, and, yeah, no, that, know, that there's is... not there's. I mean, it is, and it's also mentioned that this is new in Kubo zero point eighteen. There isn't. I didn't add a disclaimer of like, hey, this is new code paths. Don't rush this out. Like do your, they should be doing their normal, you know, monitoring flow as changes roll out. That matches the scope of work as described when I was discussing okay. this with Cameron, but I haven't had a chance to talk to Mario specifically yet. So uh, I'll, I'll check in with him here Monday when he's officially back in the office mm -hmm. um, and we'll, um, we'll clarify that's the case. Maybe it was this Monday. I'll, I'll double check today to make sure that we don't have access to him. Cool. And I guess my last question on the CID.contact side, I assume you all have like server side metrics, um, you know, for this new endpoint. You know, I haven't checked. Um, Masi, can you speak to that? Do we? I'm sorry, I got cut off for a few seconds. What was the question? Oh, I just want to make sure you have server side metrics for the HTTP delegated routing endpoint that was that was added i know you had it for reframe i just want to make sure we also have it for this for the delegated http delegated routing uh um which which specific metrics steve well, well i uh, i mean I, I think it's a class of metrics right there is you you guys set up a class of metrics for when like I guess there was the original indexer bind providers endpoint, then we added <laughs> reframe, and now we've added HTTP delegated routing IP IP 337. I just want to make sure at some point here in the future, the, the Hydras and the IPFS.io gateways are going to switch from using reframe and instead use delegated routing. And I want to make sure that you guys still have visibility to the, all that, that call volume and its performance when that switchover occurs. We do. So okay. what happens on the ingress side is there's a translation happening. Okay. So translation happens on the ingress and then it's going to hit the same execution path. So the existing metrics apply. Okay, very cool. All right. So then I think the, the really the two open things here, well, I guess the, the three just in, in summary, Hydra's got to get deployed. 
Gus is uh, Gus is on that today. Uh, Kubo 0.18 has to move from an RC to an actual final release. The Kubo team is on that. And then the third is that the Bifrost uh, IPFest.io gateways need to deploy using delegated routing through Kubo 0 0.18. Um, and we're going to let Bedrock and uh, Bifrost work that out. Make sure that happens. Yep. Cool. OK, sounds, sounds good. Hey, I guess any other questions or comments on that one before we move to maybe more exciting topics like privacy? I have a very quick one. Uh, are we tracking only gets, or are we also tracking other HTTP methods? Only get is supported on sit.contact, right? There is no put. Uh, well, Kubo 18 will start sending puts. So it would be useful to start tracking that. Should put also be implemented? Or is it just tracking the numbers on how many puts we received? Uh, I think only track the number of requests just to get uh, understanding like what's what would be the load when you start supporting it? Gotcha. Yeah, I'll take that one. Thank you. Thanks, Lytle. Thanks, Nancy. All right. <clears throat> Let's jump into the exciting topic. Uh, double hashing design pathway. So we have the reader specification. Has everybody here had a chance to read it? Don't feel bad if you haven't. We can take a moment and kind of parse through it if that um, benefits the crowd. If everybody has read it, uh, we can just jump into the discussion topics. Thumbs up. Any other thumbs up? Everybody giving it a look? Thumbs down? Let's pull it up and take a look at it. Yeah, it's, it's fine. I mean, I, I haven't read it, but if I don't want to sl slow things down, if, I, if everyone else is already paged in. Nothing's faster than everybody understanding what we're talking about. <laughs> okay, cool. So are we just going to take a few minutes to give everyone ch a chance to read? Yeah, let's, let's give it, um, let's give it five just to be safe. And uh, we can jump in if y'all want to throw questions while you're reading into uh, either comments on the notion or you can throw them in chat and I'll aggregate them later.
All right, that would be five minutes. Does anybody else need any more time to chew on that? We can kind of go through it together as well. So off the top, I didn't see any questions in chat. Did anybody have any questions they'd like to throw out there verbally? Now's a good time to do that. One, just to make sure I uh, understand, this is for the, the non-private version that we have today, you can get, you, we do content and peer routing in one call, right? So we have one round trip, and this effectively is going to add two round trips when you go to yes, privacy exactly. mode. Cool. Uh, well, so we can reduce the second round trip eventually. So if the clients have a cache of the provider uh, mm -hmm. like addresses, then they can avoid doing second round trip. Okay, make makes sense. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, it, it makes sense. I I just think I would just make sure that's called out. I think that needs to be emphasized more. Again, it's not to. Hey, I don't. I, just, I don't want that to be a surprise to someone later. Uh, you know, because obviously so much of the push to around using indexers was around, about reducing round trips uh, and you know to minimize. Um, uh, sorry, to, to minimize uh, speed of light impacts, and you know, we we absolutely legitimately have to add one here. It obviously will get better when we ha have client side caching, like you say. But I just think that should be you know, more highlighted. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, great point, Steve. So you will uh, add this in. I will say uh, one thing I wanted to draw your attention to, Steve, that I didn't see from the original comments is that upon testing we're seeing pretty significantly reduced performance impacts so now that we've got a poc that we're testing on we had originally stated a 10x impact and we're drawing it down to 1.5x obviously that's not in production so you know we want to be wary with advertising that broadly but uh, I think the team's pretty pretty confident with what we're seeing presently. So that is kind of a positive side of this. I think it's been a an improvement, and I thought it was worth calling out. Yeah, that, that that's cool, guys. Good stuff. So, does anybody have any concerns about the scope of this implementation or impacts potentially to other services outside of? Um, what we're doing with the indexer itself that they'd like to bring up? Um, I, I have like a meta question or, or suggestion for the spec. Uh, kind of like having a threat model section clearly describing what's the threat model that we are protecting from. I think that would benefit, would be like really make it easier for people to engage in this discussion. Uh, because this there are like multiple specs uh, which are not uh, in the scope like the writer privacy is not in the scope the retrieval privacy is, is not in the scope we got uh, uh, two actors uh, the client and and the indexer and free the uh, provider so having like a threat model section which clearly states against whom we get the privacy and who is still on on the know. I think we need to include that in the spec and all the future future specs as well. That's... Great point. So, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. 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 So, uh, thanks. Great point. So, uh, I will add it uh, add the two. Yeah, because uh, kind of like another meta thing is like the, that type of questions were were, were like asked from uh, partners like Brave. They are like super uh, privacy conscious and their security team that's the first question so having that written down as a part of spec will avoid like round trips across the orgs so good to have partners isn't it always ask good questions <laughs> yeah this is a good perspective liddell i dropped a white paper that i was recently reading into the um into the chat i think that speaks specifically to some of the kind of potential malicious actor activities that we're, uh, I think, addressing with this enhanced capability. 
but I'd be curious to hear your opinions on that. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to like block uh, block this call. Uh, but just um, yeah. adding a section and like referring to all the literature would be also beneficial for this part. Ivan, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that one on you, okay? Yes, sounds good. I guess ProBlab pro folks, do you have any questions or about what's happening here? Maybe you've already been in the loop. I know you've all been very involved in privacy measures, particularly on the DHT. Is there anything else that sticks out to you? Um, so, something that um, sticks out to me is the, so, so maybe that's not very relevant, I would just put it out anyway. So there's this, um, so in the spec, um, it says ha like it's hashing something everywhere. Do we double down on a specific hashing function? Do we also use a multi-hash for that? Do we, um, is there some upgrade, upgrade path for the future um, that we should keep in mind here? Just some questions. Yeah, so great question. So, so we specifically uh, left the exact encryption hashing out of the out of scope. So basically, we just exactly aligned with what uh, DHT implementation is to make sure that they use exactly the same thing. So at the moment, it's like SHA-256 for hashing and uh, um, AAS in GCM mode, I think, uh, for encryption. Basically, the same that uh, DHT implementation is using. Right, right. And uh, could it become a problem at some point if we wanted to upgrade something in the in the protocol or in the, in the spec? Um, if we used own SHA-256 only, I, I remember that in the current DHT implementation, we are also just SHA-256 hashing all the multi-hashes um, to get to common key space for CIDs and PRIDs. And I actually don't remember why we did that. I think it's just to to arrive at the at the common key space for for both types of um, like PRDs and CIDs. Um, well, I I think I just wanted to bring it to our attention and just ask. So, but it seems you have already thought about it. So th that's a great point. So let me uh, I'll take a note to reflect this in the spec about the future upgrades to different caching mechanisms and how we're going to tackle that. So. But it should be or can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, great. So it should be so basically the last hash. So here the second hash should be the same hash that is already let's say unifying the peer ID space and the CID space. So when we decide to migrate this peer ID CID space to another one, we will also change the second hashing function. So the function should be the same. And also, I think something, maybe I missed it in the spec, but is there any um, specification on how the um, content provider actually push the, the records to the indexers? Uh, yeah, so that basically remains uh, unchanged. So exactly the same as it is now. So it's kind of like um, in the beginning, it mentions that uh, like writer's privacy uh, is out of scope. Basically, they're going to use yeah. exactly the same advertisements and etc. So we are uh, focusing explicitly only on the on the reader's part. Does it make sense? But yeah, go ahead. But the thing here is the so the second hash of the CID is mapping to the hash of the peer ID, right? Uh, say this again. So um, in this case, so the clients are going to request the hash of a CID and the indexer uh, yes. are going to reply with the hash of the peer ID of the content provider. So uh, the clients would re send requests to uh, hash of the uh, hash of the multi-hash from CID yep. and the indexer would reply with encrypted uh, peer ID. The client would decrypt the peer ID using the original uh, multi-hash then they would calculate a hash over the decrypted peer ID, would send it to the indexer, and the indexer would reply with the provider record that is encrypted with the original peer ID. The client would receive the, that record and would decrypt it with the original peer ID and can use it to reach out directly to the provider. But in the specs, 
it says that the indexer returned the encrypted hash of the peer ID and not directly the encrypted peer ID. So, the, yes, so apologies. So there was a wrong link to the spec in the beginning. Okay. So if you follow the link that Antonio have dropped uh, earlier in the chat, basically I will just copy and paste it. All right. Basically I've, I've changed that. So it was, yeah, it was written uh, wrongly. So basically, yes, it was reply with the, with the full peer ID. Okay, got it. Yep. Cool, should we talk about next steps? Or I don't know if there's other feedback from folks. Yeah, I have another question. Maybe it's, it's like for the next steps, like, if someone is providing CIDs to the indexer, then to be like fully um, giving privacy to the user, they must provide the hashing of the multi-hash, right? If not, the server will know the CID, right? So at, at the moment, uh, yes. So uh, Roger's privacy is going to be tackled like separately. So here we just focus on the on the reader spot. So advertisement scheme will also have to change. Okay, so yeah, okay. So yeah, we can talk in the so next that bit, okay. the, the advertisement side is the thing we, we are calling writer privacy, which is we, we're calling it out of a scope. So just to clarify, this is concentrates on the reader privacy, which means after the indices have ended up on the index there, then the indexer can't observe the query traffic to uh, gather statistics on a, this is the CID that's being queried, this is the popular one, and this is the provider that's popular and so on, right? But uh, indexer is still in a position that it could obviously see all the advertisements that are published by the each transistors and you know, you have everything unencrypted. Uh, the, on the observability of the whole network, the, the key thing to point out is that reader privacy alone makes it more expensive to just crawl the network and uh, to, to gather information because you would then have to crawl the entire network consume each advertisement change to make make a bigger picture i will fix that later on right thank you do you have any plan on implementing prefix requests or requesting the prefix of a hash of a multi-hash uh, no, so uh, not as far as I'm aware. Masi, do you have any more context? Uh, we currently don't have any plans for implementing that, but okay. uh, now that you mentioned, this is interesting. I think it's worth capturing because the data structure we use in the backend could facilitate that easily. You know, we don't have to do extra engineering to make the prefix based lookup possible. We just, we just have to expose it. Yeah, it's actually just range, just scoring for a range, and that's it. Right. Okay, great. So that's what we'll be doing on the DHT. Uh, let me add this point in too, so I will just reflect so that uh, we, we've thought about that. So, good point. And sorry, real quick, what, what's the use case for that, um, Guy? Uh, it's just to get K anonymity on the request, which is so, and get plausible deniability. So when I make a request, I'm not requesting exactly the CID I'm looking for, but the prefix of it. And then either the DHT or the indexer should return me all of the provider record matching this prefix. So it may be, I don't know, five or 10 or two. And so that the entity giving me the provider record we will not know exactly <laughs> Um, which content I'm, I'm accessing. Got it. So there's a small network overhead, but yeah, it's a big privacy win. Okay, in, 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 interesting. I'll, I'll ask more on that another, another time, but okay, very good. So I know we have some people dropping off and we're getting closer to the end. Should we talk next steps on this? Um yeah sure so uh, where we are so we do have the spec so i will let a few bits and bobs that are missing that we discussed uh we do have a pr already that implements uh, the proposed change against the uh, data store that we use uh, in indexing 
So we do have performance measurements, uh, kind of like a, a, the, the, there is an MVP for that. So PR, the PR needs to be brushed up. So we need to think about migration. So there are data migration, there are no unresolved change, challenges there. We just need to sit down and discuss what would be the best path for us, the easiest for, to migrate the data over. So given the current state of the things, so I think we're like on a, on a good track to have like uh, uh, production indexes service uh, with double hashing running like end of Jet, like somewhere like end of Jan, mid Feb, something like that. So there are no like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as far as we are aware, I mean, there are no unresolved uh, challenges. It just, uh, yeah, just requires some more engineering efforts. Cool. Okay, great. Yeah. And then there's obviously the client side getting it into things like Kubo or other IPFS implementations. So yes, then the message is going to be integrate clients with the with this implementation. So we're also probably going to implement uh, a client library, some client library for to do these interactions. Cool. And is the thinking, is, is this going to, is the thinking that this is some sort of uh, go library that something like Kubo would con uh, consume, or is will Kubo go write its own uh, Go code to this HTTP API? So there is this typical uh, user journey that one needs to do. For example, if you want to look up a hash, you need to. You need, if you want to look up a seat, you have to take a hash of it, then do like a bunch of things, and like just sequence of steps. So. Uh, what uh, we think it suffice to like implement maybe that in some reusable function so that others can just take it and use it. So, Master, do you have any any thoughts on that? Uh, Steve, we'll, we'll provide the Go library for us, the client Go library that could be used in Kubo. Cool. Okay. Sounds uh, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. M makes sense. It might be uh, just I don't know if you, you're aware. Obviously, we had that separate uh, delegated routing. Um, uh, you client and server library. We ended up just pulling that into the Go Live IPFS repo. We've, we're starting to build like kind of a mono repo of all of these kind of related utilities and packages, so that releasing and staying, you know, and having consistent, you know, the proper versioning between uh, the modules is in place. Um, so, I mean, just want to make sure you're aware that that is out there. Um, not not saying that you need to use that, but just just let you know it's there. That's a great chat. So uh, we are hopefully Gus would be there in Switzerland when we meet up. So we're mm -hmm. gonna iron these details out. But cool. the the library that I had in mind is agnostic of IPFS. Right, it's just a cool. library to interact with Indexer. Um, yep. But but yeah, we will iron out the details of how this would play out with the HTTP delegated route. Okay. Very good. Cool. So, so, so you guys will create. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Chainsafe is doing an implementation of the double hashing for the DHT, but maybe there are some piece of code that you can just take uh, from this so, implementation. This is the one that I um, aligned with for all crypto stuff. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, we we aligned with that one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the, uh, that I mean, there's kind of what's. I guess one of the things that's kind of been on my mind, and not that these have to be sequential, but at the same time, I want to get some stuff fully done rather than a lot of things in parallel. Like there, there's there's the double hashing, or there's the reader privacy in the indexers, there's reader privacy with the DHT, and there's the ambient discovery um, aspect. And like all three of those are in progress right now. I guess I'm I'm partly I'm partly curious amongst our, I guess, the three teams represented here in terms of how we're prioritizing these, like kind of what's, what's the sequence that we would ideally want to land? Is there a way for us to double down on some of them to get them done quicker rather than having all three go in parallel? My vote would be reader privacy. We can, uh, I'm confident we can land that. Yeah. I, also, I, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, just so like a small point so to Marcy that the um, uh, reader, it's not uh, either or. So we can basically serve both paths. We can serve normal path and uh, private path when we when the things land. So it doesn't have to be like migration, like just cut off. It can be gradual migration of clients. I, I was taking the push there from Masi of like, let's focus on the privacy related changes ahead of like ambient discovery changes. 
Um, obviously, still within privacy, there's uh, it is at least client ends like Kubo. We've got to think about DHT and Indexer. Um, but I, I think I, I I would agree. Like let's let's land the privacy work ahead of getting caught in specs around ambient discovery, et cetera. I want, I want to solve that too, but I'm fine for that to be the follow-up. I think that's also kind of in alignment with the feedback that we got from leadership, right? Yeah, that's right. Cool. Well, and so I, I know we don't have an, a thing on, I don't know if we had an item on the agenda about kind of the DHT side of reader privacy. I I didn't put that here, but um, we can get into that topic for sure. Like, Guy, I don't know how much this audience is paging. I don't know. And I, I, again, if there's, just, I'm asking some dumb, dumb questions, just let me know. It sounds like Chain Safe is also involved here. Do you want to just kind of give the update? And I don't know if it makes sense to pull any of that crowd here. Like, this is intended to be kind of any, not, not that all, not that all conversations about content routing have to be here, but like, we want this to be open beyond just PLN dress groups too? Yeah, sure. So um, basically, so there was a first design of the spec that ChainSafe is currently implementing. So the implementation is mostly done and they still need to figure out test ground for the testing. So it's still kind of hard to test the implementation at the moment, but most of the work should be done. Um, we figured out that there is a small privacy concern in the initial design. So the design would require some more work. So either we could go ahead and migrate what we already have now, uh, let's say as a first step and then correct or it was finish the design and implement the, the, the second version to correct this um, small privacy default and push the second change in a second step. But at the same time, we really want to minimize the number of DHT migration because that's painful. We need to uh, duplicate the network, which means that uh, all content provider will need, so during the transition period, to publish content on both the old and the new DHT, which we want to avoid. And the clients will want to request content from both because they don't know where it's stored. And so we want to really minimize the number of migration. So my stand is more, maybe it's worthy to wait a bit. We can already ship the reader privacy for the indexers uh, because we don't need to wait for the DHT, but maybe have one single large change for the DHT, including um, an upgradable DHT design, which will allow us to then uh, migrate pain, uh, painlessly the, the, the DHT for all for future migration uh, concerning privacy or other designs. Cool. I mean, that, that, that's great. I think that I would bias towards that as well, Guy, unless yep. there's something, I mean, I think there's more, like, for better or worse, the DHT has been living for years with its current privacy position. Um, you know, obviously, we're introducing something new with the indexers, which are more consolidated. And so I think solving some of the reader privacy issues there is more paramount. Um, we've got limited resources, letting the engineering team focus on that while you know, ProBlab and others are doing the DHT stuff right, I think make makes sense. The do we have is there an IPIP with the DHT? Um no not spec? yet. Spec? Okay. Cool. So I think that's definitely something we we want to we want to make sure we have. Yep. Yeah, it's on my list. Uh, uh, okay. I want to work on it. I just gotta and, and say, another and, project. And, cool. Okay. And Chain Safe is doing the implement is doing implementation work here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and I guess like you know, like obviously Masi is tied in with folks like Gus about how this would roll into things like Kubo. Has the has that kind of conversation been happening on the DHT side of double hashing? How we'd actually I, I know Kubo is not the only implementation, but that's obviously one of the implementations we care about. Um, so for now, it's just let's say the lip 2 p cat DHT ah, okay. uh, implementation that is being done, and okay. for now there is no let's say plan integration into inside Kubo because we will need anywhere at some point to plan a yeah, migration. Great. Yeah, okay, so, so you're, you're making this change in a dependency of Kubo, which is the P2P yeah. CAD DHT. Okay, that's great, cool. Awesome. Cool. Um, 
I wanted to bring this up, Steve. This may be my own ignorance speaking, but I wanted to clarify just to make sure everybody was 100% on the same page that the Kubo integration and double hashing implementation are presently fully decoupled and will be moving forward. Uh, I thought it was a pretty important point, and if there was any confusion amongst the group, I wanted to try to shake it out. We all agree on that, right? uh yeah yeah i mean obviously yeah i mean if there's an http api defining it and it's it's, it's it's spec'd out i don't think there's any coupling um but between the two endeavors okay we don't have to dwell on that i just wanted to make absolutely certain and then we got some feedback from will this morning and about ambient well no about the gateways let's see here I kind of went through the specs. I think Will's still working on it. I think we're going to. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to point out on the coupling thing. I think we yeah. should write down what Steve pointed out, which is the specification for HTTP. We yeah, we don't have that yet, right? But we will have it by the end of January after the uh, colo in Switzerland. So that is the only point, the sticking point in in dependencies. But so far from uh, technical perspective, looking at the spec that uh, Ivan put together, we don't see any obvious problems, right? I think that's a fair way. Does that make sense, Steve? Yeah, that that, that that's right. Again, I would I, I know he, it didn't seem like Lytle was calling anything out. Again, it's, we're talking about HTTP APIs here, so I feel like if we've got the API, we're gonna be we're gonna be fine. Um, yeah. Cool. That's worth calling out. Thanks, Masi. I prefer to bias towards kind of conservatism with risks when these kind of dependencies exist. The ones that you don't see are the ones that can cause a lot of drama. <laughs> so. It's done when it's shipped, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have anything to discuss regarding ambient routing? Obviously, with Will not here, he's the owner of that, and he's been working on it. Um, I don't want wanna... that I'm aware of, and I think it's a little bit on the back burner. Yeah, right now, now. And then I realized after rereading through this, thanks, Masi, for pointing out the IPNS indexer ingestion is the way that I'm summarizing this nom naming system. I'd like to ask. Is the content routing work group the appropriate place to discuss this topic or uh, take care, Ivan, thanks. Or is this outside the context of this group? Uh, concentrating on the in progress stuff. Uh, I think this is also a back banner item that I've, okay. I've put, been pushing it forward. And the reason for pushing it forward is IPNS is part of the routing system. So if you wanna provide a rounded routing system alternative. We need to solve IPNS inside the IPNI uh, work stream. Uh, so for now, I don't think we should spend time discussing it until the PR is reviewed and so on, which I'm pushing forward. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep that off the plate. Thank you. But thank you for raising that. So it's just good to uh, point out that this thing exists and we, are, we, are, we haven't forgotten about naming systems perfect so we are officially at time i'll just kind of summarize there's a bunch of action items here i'll aggregate them and make sure that they're communicated as well out to the slack channel and i did drag some kind of outcomes from the prior meeting here to review if anybody wants to to take a look at them um, including some of the feedback that I thought was important from leadership during our, our last uh, leadership outcome. Uh, but other than that, great meeting. Thanks everyone for joining. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And Steve, you. did you have anything you wanted to get in there before we go? Well, no, I did want to say thank you all for the involvement here. And I, I think you had a question about should the indexer and naming system be in this call? And I think this is the appropriate place to probably be discussing is at least one of the appropriate places to be discussing those kind of specs. I know it's not top of the list right now, but 
I think it's it's good to be surfacing those here. And of course, this is probably the right audience to be digging in on those details. Great. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Have a good Thanks, holiday everyone. break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Great. We'll, we'll see you all Bye. back from it. Bye. Bye.